the rest of the story. Surely Sylvester Graham was among our earliest health food fattists. He was a health nut. Born in 1794 in West Suffield, Connecticut, he became a Presbyterian minister, but Sylvester Graham distinguished himself then and is primarily remembered to this day because of his health consciousness. Health became his true ministry. Whiskey, his mortal enemy. He recommended hard mattresses and cold showers. He recommended rough cereals and fruits and vegetables. He advocated strict abstention from tobacco and alcohol, considered them a poison a substitute for nutritious food. He promoted plain homemade brown bread, even had his own specific recipe for it. Because of his stand against white bread and all meats, he was once attacked by an angry mob of bakers and butchers. Well, now you've met Sylvester Graham. Perhaps you'd forgotten about him or never heard of his remedy for drinking, but he left you something that you will remember, and that's well, that's the rest of the story. In his early 30s, Sylvester Graham became involved with a temperance society in Pennsylvania, and it was there that he formulated the theories which were to make him notorious in his time. Sylvester was convinced that no man would drink liquor if he were properly fed. Nutritious food and alcohol, he insisted, did not mix. Fresh bread, he believed, was the key to good health. But ordinary white bakery bread wasn't good enough. The bread had to be homemade. Pure brown bread made with unsifted, coarsely ground wheat. And that wasn't all. Meat was out. Meatless meals and fresh brown bread. These were the answers to alcoholism, he said. And many believed him. His following became enormous, fanatical. Tales of miracle cures came from everywhere. His pronouncements were regarded as law. His whims pursued with religious fervor. Whatever Dr. Graham prescribed, people did. Dr. Graham was not even a doctor. Nonetheless, he convinced folks to toughen their bodies with rigorous exercise and ice-cold showers, and he exhorted them to throw away what were most popular in that day, soft feather beds, to replace those with hard, unyielding beds. He told people to do away with restrictive garments, corsets, and the like, and his followers followed and after all was said and done, many or most of the prescriptions of Sylvester Graham a century and a half ago have since proved valid. His health code, based largely on intuition, was a good code. Exercise, hard mattresses, rough cereals, fruits and vegetables, no tobacco, no alcohol, no water with meals, no restrictive clothing. And yet even in our right now health-conscious era, the revival of these principles has failed to resurrect his name, though he was a pioneer in this kind of health consciousness. Something else keeps his name alive, however, Sylvester's private recipe for brown bread. Remember I said it was made with unsifted, coarsely ground wheat? Well, people today, health conscious or not, find a Sylvester Graham's prescription just as tasty as it was 150 years ago. For all of the forgotten food fads he initiated to get people unhooked from booze, one of them survives and is still stamped with his name. The Graham Cracker. The Graham Cracker. Now you know the rest of the story.